So this is my box and here we go. We can do something like LSH that's list hardware. I'm gonna pipe that to less cause it's a big list. And what it does is it probes your machine and looks for all the different components of hardware that it can detect and recognize by the kernel. Now this is a virtual machine instance running in Google platform. So you can see that like the description of the computer is a GCE system and the motherboard is a GCE system. And you'll find out that a lot of virtualization solutions do this. I bet if Nate did this on his machine, he'd see QEMU stuff because that's the virtualization solution that uh, is used by default by KVM. But VMware will do this. VirtualBox will do this. And so it's really handy if you are in a virtualized instance, if you actually want to see what's providing your virtual infrastructure, looking at some of the vendor settings in something like this or another utility I'll show you in just a second. So it also- And this was one that I learned about planning this show because I hadn't used I hadn't used LSHW before. This is nice that it kind of groups everything all, all here for you. Yeah, and there's another one that I use that's older that personally I prefer, but this is a redux of that utility. So like it goes through and shows you your CPUs that are attached and all the CPU flags that are on it and the different memory things that you've got. So if you are on a server system where there's like actual memory modules, it'll go through and tell you like the size of each memory module. And if you are using banked memory, it'll go through and describe like what the banks are configured as. I don't know if people have seen this before, but you may open up a server chassis and not all the memory modules are populated, but there's two or three, or actually two or four uh, different groups of them. That's the layout in there. Oftentimes they're banked, which means that uh, you want to add pairs to each collection of memory modules. Um, and it does things like buffering between them and caching a little bit. And you get some benefits from the hardware that way. PCI bus, and then it goes through and actually shows you the different devices attached to the PCI bus. We were actually looking at that earlier with LSPCI. So there's my virtual graphics card, looks at my different disks that are out there uh, and their formats, network controllers. So it's going through and uh, classifying some of the devices it has and telling me things like the description and uh, its device name if it exists on the system and so forth. So that's LSHW. I mentioned that I use an older tool that I've developed a, a preference for, but that's because it's an older tool that I've used for a really long time called DMI decode, right? And DMI decode gets data from the BIOS or the, actually the kernel reads from the BIOS when it is first unpacked and executed. And so what we're looking at with DMI decode is that BIOS information or BIOS information. LSHW then takes the same information, just reformats it. So you'll see a lot of the same stuff here. And so things like the BIOS manufacturer. So again, you'll be able to see Dell, HP, Lenovo, GCP, Amazon, VMware. A lot of times for the hardware manufacturers itself, either in the BIOS information or this next section in the system information, you'll get the serial number or service tag ID. So you are working in a data center. You don't want to have to go to the physical computer to read the sticker that's on it when you want to open a support case with your hardware vendor. A lot of times you can get the information you need out of this tool, out of DMI decode. Chassis information, uh, processors. So here it goes in a little bit more detail and tell me things like the caches that are included in the processor as well as its speed. It goes into the similar description of memory, just like we saw with LSHW and then each individual device. So this is a single DIMM that's four gig that's exposed to it. And yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. It's a bunch so of, but there was, there was a quick comment on the word BIOS that you used. <laughs> was it Billy, I think, or someone said BIOS, people still use BIOS. Obviously we moved away from like the old BIOS style hardware machines to UEFI or EFI. However, this still reads those as well, right? It's not like this is a tool that only reads older school BIOS systems, right? I think the reason that we're seeing it's a BIOS is a catch-all term that talks about like yeah. hardware manufacturing information. So even though the machine may be a e 
UEFI thing. It doesn't actually use BIOS boot. Right. The same metadata is put in there by the manufacturer. Just for clarity. That's the only reason I brought it up. DMI decode also has a couple of options. So you can look at specific subsystems. So you could do a DMI decode dash T processor. And it just shows you the CPU stuff out of DMI decode. Or we could do a DMI decode dash T system. And it just gives me that like system information, like it's a serial number or service tag or whatever. Um, and if you wanted to see more categories, if you use it incorrectly, it says, here are the options you can provide to dash T to see it, the specific things attached. 